Did you know that you can dial back your last caller by just hitting the dial button? Or that if you swipe on the address bar when using Chrome, you can flick between your tabs? Welcome to the complete collection of smartphone hacks that I use. Intended for Android, but a lot of these can also be used on iPhone. Get ready to be enlightened. One of the first things people seem to ask me when they come over is, what is your Wi-Fi password? Now, this can get a little bit annoying. So as a solution, you can go to a website called qrstuff.com and enter your Wi-Fi details. This will turn them into a QR code that guests can scan and automatically connect to your Wi-Fi. If you're ever suffering from signal difficulties, if you turn on airplane mode and then turn it off again, your phone will reconnect to the closest cell tower. Screen pinning allows you to hand a phone to your friend and be rest assured that they're not gonna go snooping around. When you pin an application, then the person can only use that app and they won't be able to exit to home or do anything else until you unlock your phone again. For the photography buffs, one of the greatest hacks I've ever used comes from Adobe Lightroom. This is one of the most powerful photo editing apps with a feature called noise reduction, which as the name suggests, takes your grainy photos and uses a sophisticated denoising algorithm, and at the cost of a little bit of sharpness, completely turns a grainy photo around. Take advantage of do not disturb mode. In fact, by default, when I set up a new phone, I always turn this feature on. I'll set it so that phone calls and alarms will get through, but for the rest of my non-urgent notifications, I'll make it so I see them when I have time to see them, not when they demand my attention. Fans of the Marvel Universe might like to try the Doctor Strange. Open your camera and put it into panorama mode and then slowly move up a person's body. You need to tell them to move their arms out once when you reach their chest and then once more when you reach their throat. The effect is worth the effort. Adding your contact details onto your lock screen is pretty self-explanatory but also quite often overlooked. It essentially means that if you ever lost your phone, you can rely on the goodwill of humanity to get it back to you, 90% of the time. And speaking of contact details, most people when they're using a phone will probably type in their email address several times a day. So it really makes sense to set a keyboard shortcut. When I set up a new phone, one of the first things I do is make it so that typing the word email results in my full email address appearing. Say you're using Google Maps to direct you somewhere, but your phone's battery is seriously flagging. What you can do is, instead of keeping the Maps app open and using GPS and data, just take a screenshot of your route. It won't update in real time, but in most cases, it's still enough to help you find your way. Something I've ended up using as a lamp quite a few times is the flashlight on my smartphone, but the problem with it is that it's a very focused beam of light, so it's not great at lighting up a room. If you place a bottle or a glass filled with water on top of it though, this disperses the light. Try to use some sort of blue light filter. If you're not keen on shelling out for a specialized screen protector that filters out blue light, then at least try and use the eye comfort mode built into most devices. This will reduce the brightness of your screen as well as the amount of blue light being emitted. And if you're using your phone late in the evening, will help your body better get ready for sleep. When you're taking a landscape photo, try tapping on the brightest area before snapping. The reason for this is that generally speaking, smartphones are more prone to overexposing images than underexposing. And when something is overexposed, detail in the bright areas is lost permanently. If you then tap on the brightest areas before taking the photo, your phone will do its absolute best to make sure that even the brightest parts of the image are kept under control. And while the rest of the image will be a bit darker as a result, the details are still there and are all recoverable using a little bit of editing. If you're about to post a text heavy photo or video Instagram story, you can use something called a translucent overlay. So instead of just showing the raw file, by tapping the highlighter, picking your color and then holding down on the screen, it'll add a layer of color with 70% opacity so that any text will be clearly visible. Anyone with a fingerprint scanner should add their fingerprint at least three times not for three different fingers, but in fact, three different angles of the same finger. The reason is that most scanners have a failure rate of about three to 5%, but if you add three versions of the same finger, then the chance that at least one of them doesn't match up with the finger you place on your screen is closer to 1%. If you head over to the settings of your YouTube mobile app, there's a dark mode, which not just looks cool, but saves battery whilst also being less strenuous on your eyes. If you lose your original phone charger, you can use the MacBook USB Type-C charger. 
the power that is delivered to your phone will adjust depending on the requirements of your device. On social media, if someone is really getting on your nerves, take advantage of the mute feature. This stops you seeing their notifications and messages, but at the same time doesn't make it as obvious as just straight up blocking them. You can use Send Anywhere to send pretty much anything pretty much anywhere. You can send photos and videos to your PC, or send contacts to a new phone you're setting up. And there's pretty much no file size limit. You could send every single song you've ever downloaded, or every single photo and video you've ever taken. By adding an asterisk on either end, you can send bold text on WhatsApp to stress a point without screaming at the other person using caps lock. Use an application called Tiny Scanner to send yourself a scanned copy of your passport to your own email address with some sort of memorable subject header. The image will look like it has been scanned in with a printer, and just having your passport with you wherever you go is a very useful thing, whether that's because you want to prove your age, or you want to just fill out a form on the go. Just make sure that your email has two-step verification on. Surprisingly, the fastest way to share a URL is not to try and select it by clicking on it, but in fact, to hit the share button, after which you'll see an option to copy URL to clipboard. You probably all know about mobile data hotspots, which allow you to share your data connection with other devices that may not have one. But using an application called NetShare, you can also share a Wi-Fi connection. And there's actually a fair few reasons why you might want to do this. Sometimes when you're in a public place and you're paying for Wi-Fi, you pay per device that you want to connect. Or sometimes you might go over to a friend's house and they've only logged you in on your phone, but you actually wanted connection on your laptop. You can instantly start a timer by searching on Google, start a timer, and then how long you want it for. Most people on Android never actually need to install a separate file manager, because by default, Android has one built into it. If you head into storage settings, you can explore your folders from there. And as a bit of an extension to this, you can create a settings shortcut, which is an icon on your home screen that fast tracks you to a certain part of the settings menu. So you could use this to quickly browse your folders, or something I fiddle with quite a lot, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth settings. Keep your phone in airplane mode overnight, for a few reasons. It'll save power, it'll prevent notifications reducing the quality of your sleep, and also keep cell phone radiation to a minimum. There's also a potential lifestyle benefit. Something I do is, I don't turn off that airplane mode until I'm at my desk and ready to work, which means that I don't spend half an hour in the morning flicking through my Instagram feed. If you don't already have it, you can install a home button onto Chrome for Android, a really quick way of flicking back to whatever your default search page is. Oh yeah, and there is a hidden option to be able to save web pages as PDF files, which means you'll be able to read them offline, edit them, and send them to anyone else and know that they'll keep the same formatting. All you do is find a page you want to download and then click print, and then saving as PDF is one of the options there. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.